I'm Jan Kleinert. Um, I'm a developer advocate at Google. This is what I looked like before the pandemic. I haven't gotten a new professional headshot in several years. Um, and what we're going to be talking about today is database observability and what that means, why we care about it, um, and then SQL Commenter, which is an open source library that helps you accomplish that. So part of the reason that I submitted this talk was that I think SQL Commenter is really useful and I want people to know about it. Uh, the other reason is I'd like to hear from you if you have, agree that it's useful, if you see use cases you think it could help you with. I really would love to like validate that with people, um, especially people who are with me in real life. So um, I'm around after or after the talk or on Twitter if you want to talk about it later. Okay, so we're going to start by talking about database observability in general, what it is, kind of what the landscape looks like, what the problem is that would require us to need this in the first place. Then I'll talk about SQL Commenter. We'll do a live demo, hopefully, and then there should be plenty of time at the end to share some resources, have Q&A, and for those of you who are here in this room, I, I'm going to ask for a quick favor, if you're willing, at the very end. Um, all right. So... Particularly these days with lots of, you know, complex distributed applications that are, you know, built using microservices, it can be hard um, if you're not a database expert to troubleshoot application issues when they are likely related to databases. It can be hard to figure out where the queries are coming from and how to, you know, how to actually correlate that with the problems that you're seeing uh, from the databases. Um, Typically, not always, but typically developers don't have the same level of database knowledge and troubleshooting skills and stuff as like a DBA or someone who focuses on that as their full-time job. And, you know, more and more, especially with like full-stack developers, you're expected to know a little bit about a lot. Um, and in this particular case, that can be really challenging. Um, ORMs are one way to help make life easier sometimes um, when you're developing applications that use a database. They have pros and cons, right? There's, they're not perfect, um, but they can certainly make life easier by generating those SQL statements for you and you just have to write the code, right? Um, but then if you think about troubleshooting with applications where the SQL queries are being generated by the ORM, you probably have even less knowledge about where a particular query originated from because you weren't even the one who wrote it, right? Um, so that can also add complexity into troubleshooting database issues when you're using applications written using ORMs. So what do we do about this? Um, how many of you are familiar at least a little bit with open telemetry? So some of you. Um, so if you are, then, then you're aware that it's a set of like APIs and tools and SDKs that allow you to create and gather and monitor um, telemetry data. So metrics, traces, logs, things like that. And then use those to, to troubleshoot or, or gather data about your applications. So there hasn't really been a standard way of doing this for databases as well. There are some things out there that help you with database observability, but kind of what spawned SQL Commenter was the idea of like, well, what if there was a standard format? Kind of like OpenTelemetry or part of OpenTelemetry, there is a typo on the slide that would allow you to propagate, not progate, application tags and traces to databases. Um, so that is kind of where the idea for this came from. Uh, and that's what SQL Commenter is trying to do. So it extends the vision of open telemetry to databases. So the way that it works is, and I'll talk through this in more detail in a minute, um, it can send trace context and other information too, um, to the database as SQL comments. Um, and you, as you can see here, you can send other, more information than just that. You can send information about like action controller, route, database driver, version, all this information along in SQL comments. Um, in September of last year, SQL Commenter was donated to Open Telemetry. Um, that is, so the donation has happened. What is still in progress right now is figuring out exactly how that'll be incorporated. Um, so I think there's discussions going on still around that, but the, the project is out there. You can use it today. Um, and we're hoping, you know, the idea behind donating it to Open Telemetry is just to make it not tied to a particular vendor, just make it out there so that people can, anyone can use it or expand upon it and all of that. All right, so there's a link here to where you can find the repo um, on GitHub. There is also like a, I don't think it's mirrored. They're in the process of moving it over to OpenTelemetry, but this is, I think, the best place to find it for now. Um, 
And this is what it is. Basically, it's an open source library that allows ORMs, or not ORMs, which I'll talk about too, um, to augment SQL statements before they're executed with comments that have information about the code. So it's really to help you tie application code to what's happening um, with those queries. And so here's where it's supported today. The language that are, languages that are supported are Python, Java, Node.js, and Ruby. When I was looking at the repo the other day, I saw there's something in there for PHP. I haven't tried it yet, but it looks like maybe there's now also PHP support, I think, for Laravel. Um, for frameworks, there's Django, Connects, all, I'm not gonna read the whole list to you. Um, there's a whole set of frameworks that are supported today. Um, and what that means really is that if you use SQL Commenter with one of these, that auto tagging is, is enabled. So you can just add a little bit of code into your application, and if you're using one of these, then SQL Commenter will, will work for you out of the box. Um, and the databases that are supported are Postgres, MySQL, MariaDB, SQLite, and um, Cloud SQL, which, Cloud SQL for Postgres and MySQL. Um, and we're hoping this list is going to expand. We'd love to have people, you know, contribute support for additional languages and frameworks and all of that over time because um, this is kind of just the beginning. Okay, so let's look at how this actually works. I like having this here, I can point. Um, so here we have a SQL statement, select from students. That's a really simple SQL statement. Um, select star from students. Um, and then you've got this SQL comment here, and it's using standard SQL comment notation. Um, you can find the spec for SQL commenter here, and I mentioned before, you know, you can have it work with ORMs to auto-generate these comments. If you're not using an ORM or you just want to do it yourself for some reason, you can also follow the spec here and just build these comments yourself um, and, and insert them in there. Uh, so the way that the format works is you've got your sequence, <laughs> SQL statement and then the comment, which is a set of key value pairs. So they have to be comma separated, like you see here, URL encoded, and then sorted in lexicographical order. So all of that is in the, in the spec, so you can see, and there's some pseudocode for how to do each of the steps and put it all together, and then how to actually parse it back out if you need to do that. Uh, but that's the example we have here. So we have action, controller, framework, and then the, the trace parent and trace state is that open telemetry trace data. So that's really kind of all there is to it. By itself, it is literally just putting comments into SQL statements. Um, but it's what you can do with it that gets interesting. Um, and I should talk about that a little bit. So what can you do with this? So if you have these going into logs, like your database logs, for example, you can then, I mean, just look at the logs if you want, or you could import that into your favorite like APM tools. Maybe you're pulling in logs from other sources and you wanna add this too. Um, I'll show you in a little bit how you can kind of see this stuff in Cloud Trace. Like there's lots of things that you could do with this depending on what you're trying to accomplish, but if nothing else, you can get it in your database logs and look at it from there. And here's a bit more of an example. So this is an example from an application that was kind of like a ride sharing application. And so you can see in this log entry here, you've got your regular log stuff. You've got the statement that was made and then we have the comment which starts here. And you've got the controller, the database driver, framework, route, and then the trace parent. And I was gonna say obviously, but I don't know if it's obvious, so let me not say that. Um, being able to see this helps us understand exactly where in your application this statement was generated, right? So if I didn't have this and I just had this, if I'm not familiar with that application because I'm just updating it and I didn't write it myself, or if I did write it but I just, there's just so many parts to it I'm not sure, I might not know where to look in the code to figure out if there was a problem uh, with this part of my application. So this can help us narrow down where you need to look. Okay, so we're gonna try to do a demo. Bear with me. And I have a feeling I will need to, get, oh, yep, I'm gonna refresh this real quick. Um, but what I'm going to show you is, that looks a little bit wonky, but we'll, we'll try. So what I want to show you
Hang on one second, Let's see if I can get this working. There we go, all right. So there is a sample, this is straight from the, the GitHub repo, there's a sample in the Python section that I think is beautiful in its simplicity um, because all it's doing, it's not using you know, any, any of the ORMs really or anything, all it's doing is enabling SQL commenter. Um, I'll just come point, that's possibly easier. There's this, ignore the squigglies, it's doing its own thing today. You can see here where they're importing um, comment cursor factory using that SQL commenter library and then the other place where that's then, de mm, let me scroll. The other place where they've updated this is to add this here, and what's happening here is there's these with parameters, with database driver, with open telemetry, with a bunch of other things, and that's telling SQL Commenter which, which parts you want enabled, what things do you want to be stuffed into the logs. Um, and that's all there is to it. Um, I'm gonna run this one in a second so you can see what is generated, but here is an example um, of like, well, what if, what if I'm not building something from scratch? What if I've got an application and I just want to start using SQL Commenter with it? So this is, I know this is tiny. Let's see if we can make it a little bigger. So this is an application that's using, I think it's using Connects. So it's a node application, yeah, Connects. And this is a sample from like the Google Cloud SQL Postgres samples has nothing to do with SQL Commenter in and of itself. But what I did is just enable SQL Commenter in here. So I did have to do NPM install, blah, blah, blah. You can find what the particular packages are in the documentation. But once you've done that, there's just two things that you have to add. So you have to add this right here, this wrap main connects as middleware and then require that package. And then down here, the only other thing I had to add was doo 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 was this, this app.use. And similar to what we saw on the other one, there's, there's options here to tell it what pieces of information you want to go into the comments. So in this case, we're doing trace parent, trace state, route, and database driver. Um, you can define arbitrary key value pairs if you want. There are certain ones that are like just kind of included out of the box or supported out of the box, but it really is up to you. Like let's say you wanted to do you're testing two different versions of an application and you want to have that in the logs in case one of them is, you know, doesn't go well and you want to be able to tell which, which version of the application those queries were coming from. You could put all sorts of things like that in there too. Um, so I'm showing you this one just so you can see how you could enable SQL Commenter in an existing application. But over here, this is a sample that was written just to demonstrate. So it's very simple. All it's doing is making a bunch of statements, I think it's just looping through and doing like select star from names. Um, so not terribly exciting, but you'll be able to see what's happening. Um, and all that's really coming through on this one is the open telemetry data and I believe some of this database driver information. So let's see if we can get this to run. So I have a database already that we can connect to and I've set up some environment variables. So if all is well, we should just be able to run the sample app. Okay, that looks good. So this is just logging a whole bunch of stuff. But what's m I think more interesting, let's see if we can do this in a way that is visible for you all. All right. <laughs> I want that to go away. That's a little better. Can we pull this? No. Okay, well, I'll scroll over and show you the exciting part. Um, so these are our logs. I've got um, the log statement set to all in my flag so that I'm logging every SQL statement. You don't have to log every SQL statement, but for the purposes of showing you what this is doing, that's particularly helpful. Oh, goodness. Okay. Gonna show, aha, okay, so if I expand one of those, I'll just come over here and point. So you can see we've got the log, it kind of looks like the example I showed you. I've got the log, there's the statement, and then here's the comments that it has inserted. So it's got the DB driver equals, that's a whole lot of unreadable stuff, but you could you know, decode it and get something useful out of it. Database API level, thread safety, driver, params, all sorts of stuff, and then there's that trace parent 
information that was inserted. So, okay, maybe that's useful. Maybe you want to import that into to some tool and, and do something with it. But you can also see it. This is um, Cloud Trace. I'm using this just because I have it available. You could use it in another tool. Um, and if it's doing what we want it to, you should be able to click in here and see, yeah, see that information pulled up here. So you can see our select statement, tells you it's a Cloud SQL query. And then you can still, you can see as labels that information that came through from SQL Commenter. Um, so that is effectively how it works. If you go into, let me just do this, make it bigger. If you go in here to the, um, the documentation page, there's lots and lots of good stuff. If you want to learn more about this, talks about the format. This is the spec page right here. It talks about common escaping and all the things you could need to know are all in there. But there are also examples. So if I go into Python here, it'll show you how to use it for each of these supported frameworks or ORMs. So if we go to, let's say, SQL Alchemy, there's some good examples in here um, of like what packages you need and then also how to actually enable it in your, in your apps. All right. I'm going to switch back over for a second. Actually, before I do that, so <laughs> got ahead of myself there. Is it here? Um, one thing I'm not showing you today because the talk isn't really about this is um, how Cloud SQL has integrated the SQL commenter information into the product. Um, it's doing that in a way that helps all of this stuff show up visually. I'm going to just show you the documentation page rather than do a full-on demo of it. And if it looks like something you want to play with, you can. This is like what I would love a future world to look like where lots of other databases that aren't just Cloud SQL have this kind of visual information for, for folks to use for troubleshooting. So this is what kind of like the dashboard looks like. You can see all of these metrics plotted out. And then there's this table that has the queries, which, okay, that's cool. Um, but it also has this tags, and that's where the application tags show up. Let's see if I can find you an example. Yes, so, ooh, it's super tiny, but I'll tell you what it says. So there's the tags here. So it's got the action controller route um, information. If you kept scrolling, you'd have database driver and all of that. Um, and so you can see like which of these, you know, li lines in the table basically, but combinations of action controller route are causing the most load or causing the most, you know, there's, there's several different metrics that you can look at. I think it's CPU, IO weight, lock weight, all of these things that you can filter. Um, and then if you click into that, you can actually get um, query plan samples. So let me see if I can find you an example here. Something like this, it's super blurry on the screen, but you can come in and see stuff like this. So I think that's useful. That's something that today is just in Cloud SQL, but I would love it if we could see stuff like that in some of the other tools that are out there. I think that would really help make this even more accessible and less intimidating to folks who are not experts in all of these things, but need to be able to troubleshoot. Okay. So I said I wasn't going to talk about it. I talked about it a little bit just <laughs> because I'm excited. Um, okay, so I want to share resources with you all, and then we have plenty of time for questions or anything like that. Um, the documentation for SQL Commenter is here, and I'll share these on Twitter after uh, because it's not easy to write down all of this. Um, the GitHub repo currently is here, but this is where we think it will eventually be. There is a copy of SQL Commenter there, but I'm not honestly not entirely sure of where the updates are being made at this point in time, but I'm pretty sure it's still up at this top one. Um, if you want to hear more about SQL Commenter and Open Telemetry and kind of like how we see those, those two interacting in the future, there is a good podcast here um, with Nimesh, who is the product manager uh, at Google Cloud who works on this, and um, Morgan McLean from Splunk.